Why don't Christians spend more time talking about, writing about, thinking about, singing about, celebrating the biblical doctrine of adoption? You know, theologians have a propensity for uh, taking something natural and whole and slicing it into little tiny pieces. And that's not always bad. In fact, the Apostle Paul, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, does exactly that in providing for us in the book of Romans, chapter 8, what we call the golden chain of salvation showing the steps along the way, being predestined, being called, being regenerated, uh, uh, affirming faith or uh, having faith, repenting, being forgiven and justified, uh, ending up with finally, as we're sanctified through our lives, eventually being glorified. But in there also is the sure and certain promise that when we come to saving faith, We're not merely forgiven ex-offenders, but we are adopted into the family of God. Imagine this. Most of you know that uh, four years ago, I was arrested for driving under the influence. And I was guilty. Suppose that when I went to the judge, and I'm standing before the judge, he said to me, Not only am I finding you not guilty because I'm going to punish my own son for what you did, but I'm going to adopt you into my family. I would want to celebrate both of those things. When I think about the reality that so much of of the weight and the burden of our lives is built around our failure to grasp our identity, our feeling alone and orphaned. And then I open my Bible and I see the Bible telling us, see how very much our heavenly father loves us, that he allows us to be called his children. That we are called to call our heavenly father, Abba, Father. This is a glorious truth and one that is, how do I put it, profoundly emotive, which may answer our question. It's interesting to me that we, in the evangelical church, tend to fall off one of two sides of the horse. Either we believe that uh, any kind of emotional response is something unhealthy and that what we do is we we see the function of the word preached as downloading information from the pastor's brain into the congregant's brain it's those worship services that i would call three songs in a lecture or on the other side we want to get all hopped up and worked up and it's all because of the uh skinny jeans and fog machines (laughs) and uh, the music. But what we don't typically see is a deep dive into the glory of the gospel that can shape and change our hearts. That asks a lot from us. In the broad, happy, clappy church, we don't want to be asking the audience to be that emotionally engaged. In the dry and dusty evangelical church, we don't want anybody to be emotionally engaged. But the truth is that the gospel isn't merely a story about moral accounting, my sin on Jesus, Jesus' righteousness to me. That's true. It's glorious. But we are adopted by our Father who loves us by name. We are the apple of his eye. That's something we need to spend more time on because it changes everything. If you're interested, by the way, in learning more about this, one of the greatest books I've read in my entire life is called Children of the Living God on the Doctrine of Adoption. It's short, it's brief, it's understandable. It's written by my hero and my friend, Dr. Sinclair Ferguson. Children of the Living God, published by Banner of Truth Trust. 
If you're a believer, spend time on this. If you're not a believer, I've got good news for you. Not only can you be forgiven, but you can become God's own child by his grace alone.